<clears throat> yeah, so uh, maybe I do the uh, short opening. So more than one year ago, or no, almost one year ago, I guess it was um, that uh, Georg Galle and I made a proposal for this contact tracing. So back then Georg had already worked on an app that uh, helps doing contact tracing with QR codes. And uh, then the time <clears throat> came that there were the projects of the S3S thing, which are the final projects uh, for the uh, students in Alternance with the companies. And um, yeah, Thibaut and I, we thought, okay, let's uh, propose that to a student team because it could be very interesting to look at uh, together with the students. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> then we uh, even had multiple applications, which was quite nice. And uh, then we, the students at EDC uh, were selected and uh, we are very happy with the selection because it was always a pleasure working with them. And uh, it was a very interesting journey because when we started, we didn't know where it would go from uh, especially the political development of the crisis and therefore for me, it was very exciting to follow this and also to have these very nice discussions every Friday evening that we had. And uh, so, yeah, I loved it a lot. And uh, therefore, I'm really happy that today we have the final event, uh, the final presentation, also together with the um, international team, with our German partners, with Timur, Moore, who's joining us, who also joined us before, which is a great add-on to the project and followed it also a little bit. And uh, yeah, so therefore I'm uh, really looking forward to the presentations. And uh, so I'm uh, super happy with the project and uh, I'll also say a little bit at the end. And uh, without further ado, I hand over to you and look forward to your presentations. Thank you, Mark Oliver. I just let the Vic uh, we do a quick test because uh, it's number. Yes. So. so maybe Thibaut, if you wanted to say something, of course, I do not want to cut you. You can also say something if you want. If not, I think, I hope I captured uh, many aspects of the collaboration. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, <good. laughs> Okay. So Lido, can you share a screen, please? Yes. Uh... <laughs> Yes, I can just say some words for a while. Um, I shall start to say uh, hello to everybody from uh, the Southern Alps <laughs> that are magnificent. And I think I have nothing to add to uh, what Mark Oliver has said because really this project was a great project with a very nice team. And uh, I hope we, that we, we have uh, helped science and traceability to make a, a bit of progress. And uh, we also hope it's, it's a bit early to say that, but we, we, all, we really hope to meet in uh, München, if possible, in uh, June. And I shut up now. Okay, thanks. So I'm going to start. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, we are going to present you today the OS3 project, uh, contact Tracing and respect of privacy. This project uh, focuses on the appearance of tracking applications that have uh, appeared and are still appearing uh, today to face uh, using uh, new digital means the COVID-19. We are four students uh, to carry this project. Uh, Edouard Fortuné, Ludovic Francis, Quentin Gézéquel, and me, uh, Paul Germain. And of course, uh, two tutors are leading us, uh, Marc Oliver, uh, Pal and Thibaut Desort. I will uh, be more precise about them uh, after. So carry on the slide. Uh, I will speak uh, in the first part about the context and uh, our motivations for this project. I will continue with the steps we followed to concrete them. Uh, Quentin will take the lead uh, to show you the applications that we studied. And uh, we also, he will also sorry, uh, talk about the BRICS. Edouard will take the interviews we conducted. And finally, Ludovic will expose uh, you uh, what he, we think about a perfect application. So let's move on to the context. 
as you may have noticed uh, since uh, 2019, the different countries uh, of the world are facing an unprecedented crisis uh, with a global pandemic as a consequence. For your uh, in France, but also everywhere else, uh, humanity has been organizing itself uh, with the implementation of barrier gesture, the use of masks, and the introduction of uh, social distancing, and so on. However, uh, in front uh, of the increasing propagation of the virus, uh, country, uh, countries are organizing um, themselves to create applications to manage the virus. Uh, among them, you can find uh, tracing apps, but also uh, symptom checks app uh, and quarantine apps on uh, extra. And these new apps transmit a lot of information about their users, uh, some uh, of which are very critical, like uh, I think of a GPS data or health data. Uh, fundamental liberties are then put in danger. Uh, in France, for example, we know uh, which is known for enforcing the RGPD uh, to the maximum, but uh, took for stop COVID some liberties. As for our background and for you to understand why we choose, the, we choose this project, um, yes, we are three to have integrated the cyber specialty in uh, IMT and one uh, for the Penum specialty, which is uh, basically digital platforms. And uh, all our classes deals with the value uh, of data and the need to, for its protection. Moreover, uh, we are all four in FIP, which is the apprenticeship training uh, in IMT, in uh, digital services companies uh, where the empathy uh, uh, is on security. Uh, some of us have been able to work on the RGPD as well, uh, the RGPD compliance uh, in their company. We are supervised by uh, two IMT uh, research professor. Uh, like I said before, Thibaut Deswart is a social uh, sciences graduate and old uh, doctorate in management sciences. He has been working for several, several years uh, on the issues of ethics and artificial intelligence. Mark Oliver is also the director of uh, CNI Cyberture. Uh, he also leads the IoT smart space team uh, at the Technical University of Munich in Germany, and he is the coordinator of the digital education activities uh, of the Franco-German Academy for the Industry of the Future. Finally, our project is part of the Franco-German Academy, like uh, I presented to you just before, and uh, is uh, in part partnership with the Technische Universität München uh, and the Munich Center for Technology in Society. It is a Russian doll system uh, where several projects are developed uh, in parallel at uh, TUM and IMT. And uh, we are integrating uh, the, the tracing application project uh, as a, a little doll in this system. Uh, so let's move on to the steps. Uh, our work has been articulated in five different steps uh, that I will state before going into detail. Uh, the first step, the, the first step, the first thing uh, we did when we, when we started to this project was uh, to document it. Uh, we accumulated information from press reviews, uh, scientific, scientific articles, uh, video extra. And uh, our objective was uh, each on our side on different domains to master a subject from the beginning to the end. We listed, for example, uh, with the help of uh, scientific articles and press reviews, the different technologies uh, used by a particular country and try to understand them. Uh, shortly after we started the community, we started the mind map. Uh, these maps had for objective to target clearly and quickly uh, the various components uh, of an application. And after having defined a global map uh, by default, we applied this model to several applications uh, implemented in several countries. Uh, we will explain later uh, how we chose the application we studied. Uh, these mind maps and the component they illustrate 
uh, allows uh, allowed sorry us to classify your uh, all data and research. So Ludo, please uh, skip the slide. Yes, into uh, four fundamental building blo building blocks: uh, a technical brick uh, gathering the technical characteristics of the applications, a sociolo sociological brick illustrating the ethical and moral character of the application. The political brick uh, showing the policy in place in the country uh, of the application and how it applies to it. And finally, uh, the legal brick illustrating the, leg the legislation uh, parts related to the application. Step four was rather uh, cross cutting. We had in parallel uh, an appointment every Friday, like uh, Mark Rivers said, for one hour or for one hour and a half. Uh, it was sessions of debate, uh, mainly between students and tutors to expose our research and progress and discuss their relevance to our project and report. Uh, to, compl to complete our research and knowledge, we needed uh, experts to answer our questions and give uh, their le very legitimate uh, opinion on the subject. And we chose, we chose sorry, our speakers uh, in a net heterogeneous way uh, in order to touch uh, all the stakeholders of the project and uh, the technical, moral, political or legal issues. Uh, finally, our last step uh, on one of the main objective, uh, objectives of our project was to define uh, in accordance with our research a perfect application. So like you can see in the slide, an application that takes the best technologies from various existing applications. An application that takes in account the recommendation made by experts during interviews. Uh, an application that answers the moral and legal uh, standards defined in our bricks. And uh, last but not least, uh, an application which is uh, applicable to different countries regardless of their political system. So now I will let uh, Quentin speak about the application we chose. Okay, so uh, now I will talk about the study we have done about the different applications. Um, so we've choose uh, five uh, different applications around the world. Uh, the first one is uh, Toussaint Covid in uh, France. Uh, we choose uh, it because uh, uh, France is a, a unitary uh, political system. And uh, we will see that uh, the different applications um, have a lot of uh, difference in the technical way uh, to work and uh, also in the political systems that are in place in the different countries. So uh, in uh, France, uh, we have a unitary system, as I said. Um, in uh, Germany, uh, this is also democracy, but uh, in a federal way. Um, we also choose uh, Poland because uh, Poland uh, is a part of uh, the European Union. So uh, the, the state is um, uh, uh, is um, uh, applying the GDPR, uh, but uh, they have uh, made uh, very uh, special uh, choices uh, as uh, using the camera uh, uh, for the quarantine app. Um, we choose uh, an app from the North America, uh, so we choose uh, Canada. Uh, one of the um, of the reason we choose it is the, that the USA didn't uh, uh, develop um, the app uh, as soon as the other countries. Um, and uh, the last one we choose is the Chinese one uh, because uh, China, China, uh, we needed uh, an Asian uh, country uh, in our list and. Uh, we also have, uh, they also have uh, very uh, special uh, choices. Uh, for example, they are using uh, geolocation. Um, and so uh, we studied uh, this, uh, these apps with the, um, 
uh, with a, um, a site uh, with the different political systems that are in uh, in place, with the difference in uh, the uh, the sociological uh, uh, view of the different uh, population of uh, of these countries. Uh, and uh, then uh, we added uh, also key figures. If you can move on the next slide a little bit, we added uh, key figures to our um, uh, to our study. Uh, these uh, figures uh, are very important because uh, they are um, uh, helping us to to give a better sight on the different uh, applications. Uh, and uh, the countries uh, that are uh, that we studied. Uh, so we, for example, uh, we choose the key figures as uh, urbanization, uh, uh, urbanization factor, uh, the impact of the COVID-19, uh, the economical implications, uh, and also the smartphone fleet, uh, because th this uh, is uh, able to to help us to understand the, the deployment uh, in the in the countries, and uh, we also added the application figures, uh, so the technical figures and uh, other things. Uh, um, I will uh, show you the, uh, later. Um, so uh, yes, you can go to the Vic. So uh, these applications has uh, very wide uh, objectives and uh, functionalities. So the first objective is uh, to detect um, uh, COVID-19 uh, contacts. Uh, so the, the first role of the app is uh, to prevent the person that have been in contact with, um, with other uh, 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 COVID positive persons uh, to prevent them to spread the virus. So as we can see, the, the goal is to trace the virus and being able to break the different contamination uh, chains. And uh, this is included in, um, in uh, health uh, policies uh, in place by, by uh, governments to limit the use of uh, uh, lockdowns, for example. Um, we've also seen that uh, these applications uh, included uh, other functionalities as uh, informing people. Um, this is really important uh, because uh, we saw uh, the huge, a huge difference, uh, for example, between the German app, uh, Corona One, and uh, the French one. Uh, the first version of the French one didn't have uh, lots of uh, information in it. Uh, so it has been seen as a very technical uh, application by the population. And the information uh, available in the apps uh, helps the user to download it because uh, they know that uh, these apps will uh, uh, we can say they will uh, reward them by bringing them uh, information and uh, key figures. And uh, the last thing about these apps uh, is that uh, they won't have to monitor people uh, as uh, we can, uh, uh, we have seen uh, this can be used uh, as a bat in, uh, in China. Um, Yes, Ludovic, you can go on. Um, so we've also seen uh, two uh, mainly uh, different uh, architectures. So the principle of the apps is uh, very uh, simple. Is um, The first part is that the phone is uh, gathering uh, data. So between the apps, the, the type of uh, data gathered uh, is uh, different. It can be uh, Bluetooth uh, contacts, it can be GPS or QR codes. And then we have uh, two ar architectures. Uh, we have a centralized one versus the decentralized ones. Uh, 
so centralized apps uh, do all the contact calculations on the server. So the, the phones uh, send the data to the, to the server uh, periodically. Um, in almost the, in most of the apps, it's uh, every day. And uh, then the, ch the server checks for the, for the contacts and it uh, informs back the phone uh, when the contact is found. And the uh, decentralized apps uh, do, it, do it in the other way. So the phone locks the contact in its memory and uh, just uh, send uh, the, its uh, recent contact list uh, to the server when uh, the user uh, uh, enter that he have been, uh, that he is uh, positive to the coronavirus. And uh, the phone uh, is uh, checking the, the, the contaminated uh, identifier list uh, uh, on the server uh, periodically, and it checks if uh, he hasn't been uh, in contact with uh, another um, uh, uh, button. So, um, in uh, both of the case, uh, you have to to prevent the, the to declare to the server when you have been contaminated, and we've uh, also seen that uh, the uh, both of the architectures as uh, have an advantage and a drawback because uh, in the first case in the centralized uh, apps, the contact list is stored uh, on a central server. But in the decentralized one, the contaminated list is uh, publicly available, so uh, it can be seen as a security issue, uh, even if the, the app is decentralized. So let's go on, uh, Ludovic. Um, another thing that uh, was uh, very important to understand the, how the apps works are the involved uh, parties uh, in uh, developing and, uh, and in, uh, yeah, developing the apps. Um, in uh, the different countries, uh, we can see uh, different policies. Uh, for example, in uh, France, and uh, Canada, uh, there are mainly uh, public actors uh, that are um, developing and uh, managing the, the app development. Uh, as uh, in opposition to the German uh, app, which, which uh, didn't involve the, uh, the public actors uh, uh, directly. Um, and uh, we also have, uh, uh, in uh, China, there is uh, there's no, uh, no uh, official uh, numbers, but we, we, we know that the Chinese government is uh, involved in the, in, the, in the app development, and uh, they just uh, ask uh, two companies to include the, the app in uh, inside the apps, uh, inside the uh, uh, widely used apps in, uh, in China. Uh, yes, that's it. Um, Um, okay, so um, okay, so uh, we um, ah, sorry. Um, so with this uh, this um, uh, so this study uh, is uh, is based on uh, on uh, five uh, major uh, criteria. Um, the first is the technological design. Uh, we we talk about uh, because uh, we uh, we uh, we included the principle of uh, privacy by design. 
Um, the second thing uh, we we added is the data government, the governance. Um, uh, we showed that the decentralized uh, system is uh, very interesting, uh, even if the uh, the contaminated list uh, of uh, contacts uh, have been is uh, publicly available. Um, there are also uh, a principle of uh, uh, not uh, using the, the app uh, outside of uh, the, um, the epidemic uh, state uh, in, uh, in the world because uh, these apps, as we have seen, can be used to monitor people. So uh, the principle is to use these apps uh, only if we are in a in a special event uh, as a, a pandemic. Um, there was also uh, another thing that is really important is the voluntary use uh, of the apps, uh, because uh, for example in uh, China or, or India these apps are are, uh, are mandatory. Uh, you can't travel if you don't use the app or, or, the, or another system uh, which can be used uh, if you don't have a smartphone. And uh, the last thing is that these apps uh, have to be uh, transparent with their uh, uh, source code uh, uh, by using uh, open source. Um, the last thing uh, we've seen is that uh, in uh, Poland, uh, they have uh, developed a second app, which is uh, used to check that you are um, uh, you are respecting the, the quarantine uh, when you are detected as a positive uh, COVID uh, positive to the COVID nineteen, and uh, we've seen that this app uh, is not uh, is not uh, really interesting because. Uh, uh, it has to use the camera and uh, can ask you to take a photo uh, um, uh, randomly. So uh, uh, this is uh, uh, um, uh, not uh, respecting the different uh, criteria we've uh, set in place uh, just before. So uh, now uh, with these uh, different criteria and with this study, we will talk about the different uh, uh, bricks, bricks for uh, uh, sorry uh, we've uh, put in place. So Ludovic. Okay. So the the first uh, the first brick uh, we we included is the technical brick. Um, so. Uh, in uh, this uh, brief, we included the different uh, architectures I uh, presented you just before. Uh, we also uh, included the different uh, data gathering uh, uh, system. So uh, this system uh, can uh, uh, this system uh, can use uh, Bluetooth, uh, as we've seen, uh, for example, for the uh, most of the European apps. Uh, and uh, GPS data uh, for the Chinese one. Um, so uh, this break is uh, just to uh, uh, centralize all the, the technical choices that have been made uh, in the uh, in the different apps and uh, how uh, uh, other technical uh, choices can be used in the app. And uh, for example, uh, for that, we studied the app uh, QR Neutron, uh, which is uh, developed uh, by the D2. Um, um, after this one, uh, we the second, the second brick is the respect for human rights. Uh, as we have seen, uh, this one is also very important. Uh, first of all, uh, an application has to be accessible to everyone, uh, and this uh, also includes the uh, people that don't have uh, access to smartphone. So uh, you have to uh, 
um, to include a way to uh, a way uh, to work uh, without uh, when when people don't have a smartphone. Um, the, uh, also, the other things that we've seen is that uh, the security context is uh, is uh, really important uh, because uh, uh, these apps don't have to leak uh, sensitive data that are uh, mapped to um, uh, health data. Um, the the architecture choice uh, is uh, also really. Uh, uh, really important in this uh, in this uh, app because uh, this also uh, include uh, security uh, issues and, and questions and and so uh, this app uh, this uh, brief uh, sorry um, shows uh, the uh, useful uh, of the applications in uh, the different countries and uh, uh, this includes uh, how much the e-apps are accepted by the population. So um, now I will uh, let uh, Edward uh, talk about the next uh, break. Yeah, thank you. So the uh, sociological uh, brick, uh, it will be more uh, philosophic and uh, complex. Uh, it's a reflection from the text of uh, Emile Durkheim on the notion of morality. Um, the Funda French of sociology were interested in morality. However, today we will uh, rather speak of uh, human values. Um, the basic problem remained the same, namely to articulate as uh, harmoniously as possible, individual freedom and collective consciousness. The goal of this brick is to proceed to a parallel analysis of uh, Toussaint COVID, the French application, with morality, and finally end up with a proposal in phase with the human values of today and tomorrow. So first of all, Durkheim uh, explained that morality is like a juridical point because it's composed of a set of rules and so he can define uh, some uh, properties. Uh, first, the moral rules have unfortunate consequences uh, when they are broken. So if we take the example of Toussaint COVID, the moral rules are more related to the respect for health restrictions, like wearing a mask, uh, respecting the curfew, respecting the containment, uh, but not installing or using the application, it doesn't bring any consequences. Uh, the application, therefore, doesn't enhance the collective consciousness. Then, uh, Durkheim distinguished two links between the act of violating morality rules and the consequence. Uh, first, a direct link uh, where the consequence is a mechanical result from the violation. In our example, not, re uh, not respecting the health restriction, like wearing a mask, increase the risk of being affected by uh, COVID-19. The second link explained by uh, Durkheim is when uh, there is no uh, part, uh, physical link between the transgression and the consequence. Uh, the link is social, socially construct. And uh, this has been shown by tracing apps. In Germany, for example, uh, downloading the Corona One app application is considered as uh, I did my part uh, for fighting the COVID uh, pandemic. On the other hand, in France, uh, whether or not you have downloaded the application, it doesn't change your social relation. So uh, the moral rules are defined by the, sanc the sanction uh, attached to it. Sometimes we don't do it because uh, it's illegal, we don't do it because it's morally unacceptable. However, it could be uh, we also have a positive sanction. Um, if act committed in accordance with moral rules uh, can be uh, can be thanked. Uh, so on a voluntary basis, downloading an application will be considered as a great app act. Uh, but today it's not directly uh, beneficial for one user. Um, so we have to link the obligation with the desire and this is done by judging behaviors. For example, with the French application uh, Toussaint-Covid, uh, the application 
the application evolve by publicly displaying the benefits in numbers. So in terms of uh, using uh, the application, the number reports, the number of uh, people notified. However, it doesn't show the individual contribution. Uh, but this is understandable due to the protection of privacy. Um, so uh, in, in conclusion of this brick, uh, the, due to the culture, uh, the moral is uh, different uh, between a country and as we saw uh, between Germany and France due to the positive uh, sanction. Tracing apps uh, were a failure to mobilize the moral conscience. Uh, we need to think first how the technology will be accepted by a user to make him responsible and so avoid uh, excessive uh, sanction. And finally, the challenge for uh, 2030 uh, is therefore to advance uh, human via values and not to regress them through the digitalized militarization of society as uh, observed in China. The moral of a traceability application could be uh, that they can help citizens lose as little as freedom as possible in times of a health or ecological crisis. And once the crisis is over, new spaces of freedom will be uh, concrete thanks to the ethical traceability application, respectful uh, of collective rules, human rights, and individuals. So now let's move on on the politics, uh, political bricks. Um, the, the purpose of this brick is to uh, present the different political context in which the tracking application are used uh, in order to assess the impact on, uh, on their use and their effectiveness. So first of all, in a federal system like the USA or Germany, uh, they have a decentralized uh, government and so the dissatisfaction of the citizens is uh, directed to the local authorities. Uh, so when Germany released their app, uh, the local dissatisfaction didn't impact its adhesion, its uh, adhesion all over uh, the country. The second, uh, uh, the second point is the unitary state, so including the, the Republic like France or Poland. Um, they have encouraged the free will of the citizens, but in this type of regime, the acceptation of contact tracing is much lower due to uh, the mistrust of the people to towards their governments. And finally, and the, on the auto authoritarian regime, so like China, uh, they have made the application mandatory in their territories and individual choice was out of the way. And so the rate of adoption by the population greatly increased. Uh, but we can ask ourselves if this is legal. Yeah, so on the legal bricks. Uh, the, so the purpose of this of this brick is to present how the juridical aspects of the application have been uh, studied, uh, especially in France. So when the French government decided to, um, to deploy the application in order to fight uh, against the pandemic, the opinions of uh, independent administrative were requested to give their opinions on the danger of this type of application for the privacy of French citizens. To do this, they interviewed uh, various people, researchers from the INRIA um, for technical expertise, but also historians and uh, epidemic specialists. Indeed, a real effort has been made by development teams to maximize the protection of personal data and privacy of users. For the um, concerning the, the consent and the, the use of the application on the legal aspects, the protection of a user is at the heart of the contact tracing application. Moreover, the user remains free to use the application or not. To do so, however, it is necessary to consent to the use of the personal data, uh, even if it's uh, if it's minimal, it has to be done. Uh, there are two levels uh, of consent in this context of a contact tracing application. 
there is a general constant consent for the use of the application uh, by accepting the, the condition of use, uh, which qualifies the data proceed as a health data, and consent for the use of your Bluetooth data, which are uh, non-medical uh, personal data. Um, finally, the last point is a generalization of the application. Uh, a major issue surrounding uh, the use of contact tracing application uh, is their lifespan uh, and the limits of the use. Uh, they want that the use of the application will be uh, compulsory to access uh, certain prevent places with certain population. So like uh, if you want to access the restaurant, you need the application. Um, on the other hand, the application uh, will represent a clear improvement for cafe and, and bars uh, and other places where uh, notebook uh, and, and restaurants, so where notebook were used uh, to count people uh, who were present uh, at the moment. And this method has been uh, widely criticized as an obvious uh, privacy issue. Uh, but on the other hand, the government will then, uh, with the application, force the population uh, to install it and to use it to access uh, this place. Um, so that's the, at the end of uh, our BRICS, uh, of our research. But after this time of uh, reflection, uh, we needed experts. Can swap the, uh, we needed experts in different fields to help us um, to build the best bricks uh, and finally reach a point where we can have a perfect application. So for this project, we conduct four different interviews and we choose our uh, speakers in a heterogeneous uh, way in order to reach all the stakeholders of the project and in particular, uh, all the different bricks. So the first interview was with uh, Jean-Marie Bonin as a technical expert on the application architecture. Uh, so Jean-Marie Bonin is a professor at IMT Atlantic. He is an expert in uh, multiple fields of computer science, and uh, he is close uh, to the collaborators of the INRIA. Um, he, the organization uh, which is in charge of uh, developing uh, to start COVID. Uh, but first of all, we talk, uh, he talked to us about the Robert protocol uh, used by uh, Toussanti COVID, which is uh, much more secure than uh, Google and Apple uh, API, uh, which have a huge, uh, Google and Apple APIs, which have a huge uh, security issues. Uh, but he started that, he stated that it only works in a rule of law uh, country because otherwise, the state uh, will know everything about our location. But so this method can work in France. Uh, he confessed to us that uh, not everyone in, uh, in RIA agrees on the development uh, of the application. And today, Toussanti COVID is uh, ineffectiveness because it will take uh, several million users uh, to make it work. Uh, and we don't have enough today. Moreover, the application does not manage several common cases of uh, various propagation, like the contact that we made also on a surface uh, or the incorrect use of a, of a mask. Uh, and finally, um, for him, uh, other use should be explored, like the creation of a health passport allowed uh, to access a certain area like a restaurant or cinema. Uh, the study of user behavior also like activities or position. But in fact, these uh, two use pose a serious problem of freedom. Um, then uh, we conduct a second interview with uh, Kevin Weller and uh, Michael Olashk. Um, following their studies on the social relationship for the app uh, application uh, acceptance. Um, so Kevin Weller is a doctoral student at the TUM, uh, earning a master's degree in sociology and uh, philosophy at the University of uh, Eichstätt. And uh, Michael Olach also uh, is also a doctoral student at the uh, TUM, and he has a master's degree in uh, history uh, from the University of uh, Eichstätt. 
they are both working on the projects of uh, traceability and uh, application acceptance. And they enlightened us on a huge difference on the sharing of the um, figures related to the pandemic, uh, which are very present in the French application uh, and not in the German application. Uh, what's more, according to them, the German application is certainly more uh, successful with uh, its uh, population than uh, the French one, uh, due to the fact that the Germans don't want to take the responsibility for the spread of the virus. Uh, so this thing, the moral brick that uh, we, we saw before. Um, they have the, the feeling of contribution is very important uh, for uh, all the, the German people. However, uh, this creates a new problem uh, because Germans uh, tend to lower their guard against uh, barrier gestures when they download the app, because as I said, they, they are like, uh, I've done my part. Um, they also uh, told us that uh, Germany has uh, had a lot of uh, communication and uh, publicity uh, when the application was released. And uh, finally, for the Germany, the open source uh, code has been uh, analyzed by famous white hacker. Uh, and so they acknowledged that the code was, uh, was good uh, and the population trusted them. So uh, the population trusted the application. Uh, in our third interview, um, we had uh, Lutfi Nuyami as an expert in uh, mobile networks for communication, um, for the communication use by the application. Uh, but finally, it turns out uh, to be more than technical interview because we talked a lot about the historical point um, of the country and uh, the population. Uh, Lutfi is a research professor at uh, IMT Atlantic in the SRCD department which is the Network System, Cybersecurity, and Digital Law Department since uh, 2001. Uh, he teaches mobile networks, and he specialized in radio resources, allocation, and energy efficient wireless networks. Um, so we were able to discuss with him the importance of taking into account the historical context of a country and the link that this can have on the propagation of the virus. Uh, indeed, the history of a country modifies the cultural custom uh, and thus the social relation. Uh, Lutfi compared uh, China as a country with a authoritarian policy where the application is not appreciated, but still widely used uh, to this Scandinavian countries where the application was immediately accepted by a large part of the population, especially since the social distancing is applied there by nature. Uh, the French, uh, on the other hand, were more revolu revolutionary in nature and preferred to question the involvement of the state in, in the development of a trapping application and uh, on the wall to refuse it. The aim of this uh, fight against COVID-19 is to reduce the R0 risk. And um, we noted that the closest country are those with low density, with a disciplined population, which respect the uh, barrier gesture. So distancing and uh, wearing a mask. Um, he, he, he told us that the appearance of the tracking application uh, is due to the multiplication of uh, sm the smartphone nowadays. It's uh, omnipresent uh, in our society. And to do, and we have to deal with uh, more virulent uh, viruses. Um, and to finish, he concluded that uh, today, money is not an issue in this fight uh, against uh, uh, the virus but the common enemy is uh, the time. Uh, our last interview thanks, uh, was with uh, Annie Blondin as a legal expert on the issue of uh, people tracking. 
so Annie Blanda is a professor at uh, IMT Atlantic, is uh, in the Network uh, System and Cybersecurity Digital Law Department. Um, her teaching and research focus on the European uh, digital law at the interface of law and uh, technology. Uh, she is also a member of the National Digital Council and uh, had been involved in several articles linked to the tracing application. Uh, first of all, at the interview, uh, she told us that the government so recruited the advice of the uh, uh, independent French administrative, so it is the, the CNIL, the National Commission uh, on uh, Informatics and Liberty, and the CENUM, uh, it is uh, the French uh, Digital Council. Uh, and so those two administratives were requested uh, for two anti COVID, and they both gave a uh, favorable uh, opinion to, for its deployment. Uh, so Annie Blandin is part of the of the CENUM, and from the beginning, she wanted uh, to deploy the application in the context of work. Uh, she also confessed uh, to us that the app uses uh, pseudonymization rather than anonymization, uh, which is uh, normally not acceptable in the GDPR, but had been, uh, in this case, accepted uh, by the, the CNIL. Uh, legally, it was uh, not uh, necessary to ask the, the consent uh, as a, uh, the user consent at the time, because when he download and he activate uh, Bluetooth, uh, he, he do it on, uh, uh, when he download the, the app, he do it on purpose. Um, she also asked the application have to be uh, totally transparent to his user, uh, including also the risk of the privacy. And uh, he, this application had been a three-step application. Uh, so the first step was a tool to get out of the of the confinement. The second step was uh, to work in a complete safety, and the third step was to have a free movement uh, in the country. But uh, Ali Blanda said, "Now we need a fourth uh, a fourth step uh, to stop the application of becoming sustainable, uh, because it's a risk for privacy." If it's used, for example, to cross uh, the uh, European Union uh, border, um, the, she admits also that there were communication problems between the government and the population um, on the on the encouragement to download it. Uh, the population had not been uh, studied, and uh, the, also the media have an important uh, role to play. Uh, on the crisis to, to promote the app and uh, on the acceptance of the app, which uh, was uh, the contrary. And uh, finally, she, she concluded that the European Union has not been able to create its own solution, uh, missing the opportunity to have a transnational application uh, and a common health policy. Uh, however, today, uh, we, we see that we have a link between a European application using a decentralized model uh, around Europe. Uh, so thanks to all the of this interview, now uh, we can build uh, the perfect application. And I let Ludovic present it to you. Yes, uh, thank you, Edouard. So, uh, all right, so now uh, let's talk about uh, the perfect uh, application, more like the ideal application. Um, so in this part of uh, the presentation, we will no longer uh, analyze and uh, compare data. Uh, the goal of this section is uh, to give our thoughts, our feedback on what should be the perfect uh, contact tracing app uh, to fight uh, against uh, global pandemics, such as uh, the COVID. So to build uh, this part of the project, we have taken bits and uh, parts from other applications uh, that we think should be reused to build the perfect applications. Uh, we also uh, took in consideration what we heard during the interviews, uh, what uh, the experts told us, and uh, and what we and what we wrote in our bricks. Um, so first of all. Uh, 
Uh, when we began our, our work on the perfect uh, contact tracing application, uh, we started to wonder if uh, an application was even the solution that we needed. Um, uh, and we found uh, a lot of arguments to support that, uh, that statement. Uh, first of all, we found in the Lancet a statement saying that it has never been used before, uh, this kind of application. And uh, we have no uh, historical evidence that it will be useful. Um, so also the second point is that uh, not all people have a smartphone. So we found out in many studies, uh, we had the numbers and uh, the figures showing that um, a big part of the population does not have a smartphone. So uh, using an application to fight the COVID uh, will, uh, from the beginning, not include all the population. And finally, uh, as we discussed it during uh, many interviews, we noticed that uh, even if they have a smartphone, people do not want to install or use the application. Uh, but in the end, we still thought these points are, are valid. We consider them. But uh, now that we have almost a year of experience and data from various uh, contact tracing applications, there should be a way to make an app that is both accessible for anyone and that people actually use. So we had an idea of a technology that could answer this need and it's uh, QR codes. So you might wonder why QR codes? So it's Mark Oliver that uh, first uh, presented us the technology uh, through uh, QR Neutron. It's a project uh, laid by the TUM, if I'm correct. Um, we knew the technology had a lot of potential, but still we wanted to confirm it uh, with our own data. So uh, after doing our research and uh, gathering a lot of data, uh, we built uh, the bricks that uh, Edward presented you. And uh, by crossing the data from our uh, respect for human rights, uh, our moral and ethics brick, and our technical brick, uh, the QR code technology has uh, proven itself to be uh, the one answering our needs, as you can see in the matrix on the slide. Uh, Bluetooth is also um, a great technology. It's uh, the one used in most of the applications today. Um, but uh, first of all, it depends on the use of a smartphone, which is a problem. And uh, secondly, it's not the most accurate technology. Uh, for example, imagine, um, imagine a restaurant uh, with a bus stop uh, in front of it. You have two people, one, one is sitting in the restaurant and uh, next to the door, and one is waiting at the bus stop. Uh, if both people are using a contact tracing application based on Bluetooth, uh, since they are in the range of the application and one is waiting a long time for the bus, so he's in the time frame of the application, they will be considered as uh, having made contacts while they do not have made contacts. So uh, the QR codes technology corrects that uh, inaccuracy. And also, if, um, if you put QR codes at the entrance of the restaurant, if uh, elderly people come in and they don't have a smartphone, so they, they would not use any uh, contact tracing application. They can still uh, come with the QR code they have printed and be scanned by the people in the restaurants. So it, you include them in the fight against uh, COVID. Um, so uh, since we are talking about uh, technical uh, aspects, so I talked about the QR code. Uh, I think that the, we think that the application should be based on QR codes. Um, and we also think that uh, the user should not be tracked and his data should not be processed. Uh, processed sorry. Um, uh, this um, recommendation comes from uh, the interview we had with uh, Jean-Marie Bonin because uh, he presented us the, the Robert uh, protocol developed by the INRIA. And um, we think that uh, the perfect application should be based on a Robert-like protocol so maybe not the same because not all countries will want to take um, a protocol made in France, but they could uh, develop their own uh, their own protocol uh, rather than using the uh, Google and uh, Apple uh, API, which is uh, flawed. Uh, also, um, by saying that um, the user should not be tracked, it means that uh, 
we should not grant access to position and um, the data should not be uh, should be stored in a limited amount of time which is defined beforehand and uh, the data should of course be secured um, our third uh, technological recommendation is uh, that the call should be open source and uh, a study by uh, researchers of uh, international or national uh, statue projects. So we discussed that point a lot with uh, our German colleagues. And uh, as, as uh, they said, in Germany, the government uh, has given uh, hackers access to the application before releasing it to the public. So they could prove to uh, the people that uh, the application was actually safe. And uh, that point is extremely important because it helps uh, people to trust in the government and in the application, which is um, a huge problem we had uh, in France, for example. And uh, finally, the last uh, technical recommendation is uh, that the application should, um, uh, should be able to work with uh, neighboring countries. It's uh, something we've seen, uh, we, we've, uh, seen in uh, Europe a lot especially between uh, Germany and its uh, neighbor, neighbor countries, except France. And um, we think it's uh, something that, that should be seen everywhere because um, it's, uh, it's a huge problem for um, regions that are next to the borders of the country. Like uh, in example in France with Alsace-Lorraine, since uh, a lot of people are traveling uh, from Alsace-Lorraine to Germany and uh, the both uh, applications are not compatible. Uh, the data is lost and uh, you are losing uh, the control of the chains of the COVID. Um, so now on the uh, moral aspects, our first recommendation is that the perfect app um, technology, uh, the technology used should, should uh, respect all the moral values we highlighted. So basically every um, moral values we presented in the uh, moral brick. Uh, secondly, the communication around the application should be uh, strong and prove its real efficiency. Uh, actually, we, we made uh, this guideline after a conversation we had uh, with our German colleagues. Um, they told us that the German government had uh, a very powerful uh, communication as soon as the application was deployed. Um, and they insisted on how people should take part in fights against the COVID by installing the contact uh, tracing app. So German people actually did it because they wanted to take part in uh, the fight against COVID. And uh, so it worked way better than uh, in France at the beginning. We, we remember um, Stop COVID, which was a pretty big uh, failure. But uh, a drawback of uh, such method is uh, that uh, once the user has installed the app, uh, they might think that uh, their job is done and not use it anymore. So we also think that um, to be real, to be truly efficient, uh, the app should um, engage more the user by um, presenting useful figures. So that's actually the fourth point. Uh, we've seen that in, a lot in um, the French app, the new one, uh, to Santi Covid which includes a lot of uh, actualized figures about the fight against the COVID. And um, it's interesting for people to see it. And it not forced them, but it encouraged them to download the app. And um, finally, uh, the user privacy and uh, data protection should be the core values advertised and explained for the user. So when we compared the German app and the French one, uh, it came clear to us that uh, both were not uh, equally advertised. Um, if you go to the German uh, app website, you have uh, a very clear explanation that anyone can understand, even without a technological background. So basically, it's, it explains the um, decentralized uh, architecture. And uh, we, don't, we do not have that in France. And uh, we think it should be mandatory for before they bring the app so if anyone has a concern about the apps, they can just go online and check the, the technologies behind it. Um, on, now on the legal aspects. Um, the first points of this uh, legal aspects is that uh, no laws uh, should be voted or amended to force people to use the application. Um, this measure is 
pretty obvious, but um, I would say I would say it's uh, the minimum effort to avoid an uh, authoritarian uh, drift. Um, during the COVID crisis, uh, citizens' liberty and uh, free will should stay a core value, um, even if we are going through a, a major virus uh, outbreak. And um, the pandemic is already uh, waiting heavily on people's mind. So if we start suppressing um, liberties and forcing people to do things, especially in Western uh, countries where we are used to have uh, liberties, uh, I think the outcomes of the crisis will be extremely bad. Uh, secondly, uh, the, uh, the user consent should not be bypassed, uh, even for general interest. So uh, that comes from the uh, interview, we the discussion we had with uh, Annie Blanda. And uh, she explained us that uh, in Europe, uh, now we had uh, some opt-in and opt-out uh, methods uh, when using apps. So when you start using the app, you have to agree on the terms, but you, can, you, have, you also have the possibility to um, opt out and take back your data. And we think that it should be mandatory in every uh, contact tracing app. So if you don't want to use it anymore, you can take back your data and uh, not use it. Um, the third point focuses on the public acceptance of the app deployments. So in France, uh, for example, we the use of the stop COVID application was voted uh, by the parliament. Um, and uh, we think that it should be um, a thing for every app. Uh, so through parliament or through a referendum, uh, depending on the, on the uh, constitution of the country. And uh, finally, on the legal aspects, um, oh, we think that all these uh, legal guidelines should be enforced by a local uh, independent administrative uh, regulatory body. For example, in France, uh, we have the CNIL, and um, in Germany, uh, I think it is the Bundesbaufstracht für den Datenschutz und die Informationsfreiheit, uh, which, uh, which should um, enforce the guidelines we, we presented you. Um, but while we were making our perfect, uh, or at least ideal application, uh, we realized that uh, it is uh, highly depending on the country's uh, political regime. Uh, the ideal application we thought of does not work for um, every country, uh, since uh, in some countries, such as uh, China, to not quote them, uh, the population interest is not uh, the main concern. Uh, they do not have the same moral and ethical goals as we have in our Western democracies. democracies. Um, therefore, uh, they can uh, choose any technology and any components for their applications since uh, they don't care uh, of the thoughts of the population. Mm, we, ha we have seen it in, uh, in China where the uh, contact tracing applications are using uh, the uh, geo um, geolocalization. Um, and, uh, but uh, more frighteningly, we have seen it also in uh, European countries such as Poland, uh, who is using uh, the camera of the phone for some of its uh, applications. Um, so um, to conclude this part, uh, I would say that uh, yes, we can propose an ideal contract uh, tracing application uh, that just have to follow our guidelines that we made. Uh, however, our perfect application um, has been so thought for Western uh, democracies rather than uh, every country's and uh, certainly not for authoritarian uh, countries such as China. Uh, all right, so now let's jump to the conclusion. Um, so to conclude this presentation, um, we have to say that uh, it's been a, a true pleasure working with, as a team with uh, Thibault and uh, Mark Oliver. Um, the current uh, situation that we all know uh, made it uh, pretty hard sometimes, but uh, we used uh, a lot of tools to uh, stay connected uh, as much as we could. And uh, we set up meetings uh, every Friday, which we uh, 
enjoyed a lot. And uh, all these meetings uh, helped us uh, to stay focused and uh, motivated for the rest of the project. Um, finally, the end results of our study will be a, a final report, uh, which we are currently working on and uh, which we are almost uh, done with. And uh, we hope to deliver it in the coming weeks. Um, it will have the same structure as this presentation and will cover every subject we talked about with the more details. So, um, uh, thank you very much for listening to us. And uh, just uh, keep in mind that the project is not completely finished yet. So, there might have been a few inaccuracies. But um, if you have any question, uh, do not hesitate. Great. Uh, thank you very much. And um, your presentation also reflects the extraordinary work that uh, you did because it's a, I find it a really exceptional presentation in uh, how clear you presented the things and also how nice visuals you put in and so on. So a uh, big congratulations to that. I have also some more words, um, but if there are immediate questions, um, feel free to ask because I have uh, three, four more slides and also one where we can discuss a little bit about the aspects that we heard. Are there questions? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can answer the two more questions. Uh, Any question? Timur, Timur has a question. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I, I didn't have a question. I had I had a comment uh, earlier about um, uh, looking at the map and seeing uh, that uh, there didn't seem to be apps either in New Zealand or or Taiwan, um, indicating that perhaps apps were not part of their successful uh, strategies. Yeah, in fact, uh, for this map, uh, it doesn't show all the application world worldwide. It's uh, just uh, some of them. Uh, that are studied. Uh, and so uh, I know New Zealand uh, have an application, uh, but it's, it had not been uh, studied uh, in this map. To, to my knowledge, my, my brother um, uh, lives and works in Taiwan. He's told me that uh, they have no uh, app in Taiwan, uh, except that uh, in a matter of days, they created an app for the most recent outbreak, but it was an app tailored only to that, to tracking the 5,000 or so people uh, involved in that most recent outbreak. And I'm not sure what technologies they use. Yes, yeah, that's it. I, I read that also. I think it's using the uh, um, GPS. So it's not uh, really, really good for the privacy. And the <clears throat> Taiwan is also a very interesting case because they, uh, as I also wrote in the chat, so they were preparing for such a pandemic for 10 years, they said, because they also are close to China. And 10 years ago, there were already uh, similar things in that area that luckily did not touch us in Europe. And uh, therefore, it's also very interesting to look at what they do. That, that makes a link with my question. Uh... And this question is related with uh, uh, your conclusions, the conclusions of, of the students and especially the, the legal aspects of, of those conclusions. And so you've said something like, uh, we, we cannot uh, force people to use uh, any kind of applications. Um, that seems uh, clear for you. But while, while listening for you, I was uh, thinking that the virus is free to infect uh, everybody. So there is a kind of asymmetry, you know? We, we, we want, because as Mark Oliver has said, we have no uh, protocol, let's say, in order to fight against uh, a pandemia. And so we are in France, it's just a personal opinion, but in France, we are always afraid um, of uh, being uh, uh, trust and praised, sorry. And we, we always want, to, we cherish our freedom. And of course, of course, it's, it's important, that's clear. But um, what, what do you think, what, maybe Paul or Ludovic or Edouard or Quentin, what do you think about 
this asymmetry, but what could be considered as, as considered as an asymmetry between the collective interest and this collective interest is to make the virus as weak as possible on one hand. And so consequence is that you have to, to give some restrictions to individual uh, freedom. Uh, so that's one point. And the opposite point is more or less what we, we, we really wanted to preserve um, individual liberty, freedom, and, and so on. And the result is that one year after, we still have the virus, while Taiwan has no virus, and, and maybe it's because they've used the GPS. So what, what, what's your feeling about, what, do you think that we, we, we've had uh, the good equilibrium between the respect of individual freedom and, and the respect of collective freedom not to be uh, contaminated, or what, what, what is your opinion? Maybe you're not, uh, if you, 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 each of us has, has a personal opinion. Yeah, um, I think I'd, I, I can talk for the group because um, first of all, um, in Asian countries, uh, we have the figures, they have uh, way, way more smartphones than we have. So deploying an uh, application is uh, way smarter than uh, in our country and um, it's including uh, a lot more people but also um, in all the western democracies um, we are very um, very uh, very much in love with our freedom and uh, i think that uh, if you start to restrain it uh, first of all it's not gonna work because uh, some people will still not comply especially in france mm. so it won't make any difference on the um, virus outbreak and uh, because you do, because if you do that later on at the end of the pandemic, um, you might have um, some uh, huge uh, drawbacks that come back, uh, like uh, like we've done with the gilets jaunes, and mm. uh, you could have uh, violent situations uh, like riots once people are free again. Because uh, if there is one thing that we know for sure, it's that uh, French people don't uh, don't forget. <laughs> so you have to be careful how you treat them. I, it, it is an interesting answer. The problem is very complex. It's highly complex. Yes. But I, I think your, your, your answer is, is intelligent. Very good. Yes, <laughs> so maybe I um, also show the uh, final slides. Uh, do you see them? Uh, maybe, do we, can you? <laughs> yeah, I stopped it. So you see it? Yes. OK, perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, first of all, congratulations again. It was really a pleasure working with you and uh, seeing your interest and your joy in working with us on the topic and also your personal investment uh, that each of you brought in. Because as you already said, like we had the meetings Friday afternoon, which is not necessarily the uh, most preferred time. I mean, the pandemic made it more easy probably, but still, and um, yeah, and also the ideas you brought in the documentation you made, the presentation, and especially also the collaboration and the teamwork. So really good. And um, I'm sure I speak also for Devo. So we'll definitely miss it exchanging with you on that. So we'll have now empty Friday evenings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, yeah, and regarding the results, so you can really be proud of you because uh, I think uh, none of us expected that we would have that many interesting results and today you presented them and um, Tipo sometimes had the uh, fear that okay which are the competencies that you got through the project and uh, I would once again say like okay you proved especially through the last part of the presentation that you really have a lot of um, interdisciplinary knowledge now and this is priceless in the sense that often your education at an engineering school or at a university is not offering you that and uh, you really did a perfect and very good evolution there and i think you have a much 
a very good understanding of these issues, which will become more and more important in our um, world today. So um, looking at the project, so how was it, um, how was it developing? So the question was and is like, how can apps help us in the future against crisis? And I put the parenthesis because at the beginning we asked like, can apps help us in crisis? And um, that was an interesting development because we had a very interesting time to look at this question. What is also interesting is that we could even ask the question because it's the first time that really apps are used for such a thing, such a global thing, because luckily it was not there before, or when the last ones were there, there were no apps yet. And so it's, it's a unique question that we have now is quite good. Um, so how was the development? So this is the map, Timo, that I was talking about. So these are apparently states that were developing apps in uh, July 2020. So there's quite some of them. At the beginning of the project, it was a little bit chaos with us because we didn't know what does what do the apps do and also worldwide because one did not know if the apps would be used if they would be adapted and so on during the project uh, the covid became more and more important and therefore also our question became more and more important um, so therefore we were really it was nice because we could really read the news and many things were related to our project, which was also a very interesting thing because it was definitely a timely project that we did there. Mm. An important thing that I remember is our discussions about restaurants saying like, okay, in France, the restaurants are super important. People want to go there and they could even be an incentive for people to install the applications because we saw that this is a huge inhibitor when the people are not installing the applications. We also saw that there's a lot of cultural aspects that are so perfectly presented. And so this re our Friday meetings remembered me always on uh, the Carambolage on Arte that many of you probably know, where it was like, okay, what's happening in France? What's happening in Germany? As I add a little bit the view of both sides and through you a much better view also on the, on the French side there. So thank you very much uh, for that as well. Um, okay, so how can the apps manage helping us with the crisis? Well, it was definitely a hot topic, as I said, and for me, there was like kind of a development during our pro period where we looked at the at these applications, and it was like the apps went from a niche towards more mainstream, which you also see in the media coverage. So probably many people or most people know today when you say, okay, Corona app, they know something about that. Then it went from a state issue to a an issue for private actors. So today we have private companies that created something for different reasons, which is also interesting. And it also went from a risk. So I don't want to have the app towards it's a chance. So with the app, we can change a little bit what is happening around us. And this is also the aspect that you said like this empowerment of the people. And um, I placed the things on purpose in that order, even though they are not necessarily related on that side, but it's also that moving to the private actors, it was also seen more as a chance, also as a mainstream and so on. So just some interesting um, things, but uh, just my personal view on that through, through our project. What is also good is that now um, we discussed also a lot about, okay, would it have been a good chance for Europe to prove that it does something for the citizens? I would still say yes. So a European app would have been something really nice, but through bureaucracy, it was of course difficult to have that, but at least for the certificates, there's now a new uh, document from the commission that is telling, okay, this has to be a European solution, which also makes sense. So maybe in the future, we'll have something going in that direction. Plus on the right side, there's a portal which lists uh, more than 50 actors that are working now on such applications that do the tracing, also including um, people from the German music yes. scene, for instance. So this is the this Smudo guy. And uh, this is also good because it really shows it's going from the public to the private and from the state that might be far from the citizens to, okay, this is uh, an idol of me. This is uh, someone I like. This really helps me doing something with the application. The installation base in uh, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland is like that at the moment. Um, so we all know that it does not uh, fulfill enough installations to really make these applications useful, but it still shows that there's a lot of adaptation in the 
citizens with the citizens in the population to use such approaches to to have some benefits from it and uh, this is the last slide so first of all i also wanted to show our audience today the, the really beautiful poster that you created uh, that summarizes again uh, your talk a little bit that you used also yesterday for the forum presentation here at uh, imt and i wanted to put again some of the questions that we asked us namely can these applications be something in the future that everybody has it on the smartphone and depending on the crisis, different functionality is added to that, for instance. Do we need a European approach? Is application something that is just uh, on vogue at the moment or is it the consequence of our development of the society towards a digital society? Then we also asked, you also asked in the talk, like is open source something important? whom do we trust the interesting question and also how to foster participation and uh, maybe with that one i wanted to open again also to to all of us so if you have some uh, last thoughts about it this could be a very nice closing of the session today i just want to say thank you for having invited me uh, i i'm sorry i was only able to participate in 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 two sessions uh, but even the short involvement I had, I, I felt was very rewarding. I really uh, I appreciate all the thoughtful work that the students have put in. Uh, uh, it's, it's helped shape my thinking about this. So thank you very much. And thank you also, Timor, because as background also, when I contacted Timor about it, he is and was very active in Twitter, in, in writing on Facebook on the subject. And so therefore, thank you also very much for joining us for some of the meetings they were always a big plus in the meetings thank you very much good so um any last thoughts devote uh, you have some last considerations Um, just, just some, some things that I have. It's not really conclusive remarks, but what's uh, an element of surprise uh, about the involved parties uh, is that in France, uh, the central government has centralized main things. While in Germany, uh, the private sector has been much more uh, concerned. And my opinion is that Germany has been a uh, solution. The German solution was better. Uh, but, you know, it's a personal opinion. Uh, I've said what, I've, what, what I wanted to say about uh, human, uh, human rights, personal human rights. In my, in my opinion, we, we, we shall debrief, debrief uh, uh, with the students after, but I think that you, you, you could have cut something like 30 or 40% of your presentation because the last part, the sixth part, I think, I think that is really very, very interesting. And that part is a bit noyé. Uh, uh, how could you? John. Come on. Drone. Yeah, in in you know because you you, you want to to show that you you've made a good a hard and a good and a, a large job and and that that's 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 clear you 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 did it, but uh, I think that you 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 could be more you know more uh, sharp with let's say maximum of thirty minutes and in for during these thirty minutes. Focus on the fifth, on, on the sixth, on the sixth part. But we, we, we shall debrief after. And 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 and. Um. At the same time, adding to that, maybe. So I found. I, I mean, I agree that it could be more sharp. But at the same time, I found it also a very nice conclusion of the things that you presented before, because it was again mentioning your viewpoint on the different aspects. And of course, it's a visionary thing because um, 
the application is not existing. We don't know what the future pandemics are. Therefore, uh, even in the current state, there's also a huge contribution to the uh, to the preservation. Hmm. And I have nothing to do to to add. Uh, only again that it has been a great pleasure to work with uh, Paul Ludovic, Edouard uh, Quentin, uh, Marc Oliver, and and our uh, German uh, uh, colleagues, of course. So I don't know what. what <laughs> yep. my, I don't know my my Friday evening. Uh, I have to to to. I don't know what I'm going to do during Friday evenings now. Yeah. <laughs> I have to invent something else, something new. Yeah. Yeah. So congratulations. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for, for the project. Yeah. Great. Good. So I stopped.